Hi, welcome everybody, it's Mike Newton back down here at Lytham Golf Academy and we're going to take a look at a new product and it's a PXG Gen 2 and it's a 0341X fairway wood and a 3 wood in particular. So new outing from PXG in the Gen 2 range. I've recently just done the driver, the X driver, which is on my channel. I'll put a little link, you can go and check that out. But we're going to delve into the fairway wood in this particular video. I've got GC2 set up on the ground as always, so I'll give you some numbers, my personal feedback on the looks and the feel of this particular club. Okay, so Gen 2 fairway wood, and it's the X. So they only do one version of the fairway wood. We'll see the driver, they do an XF and then an X. So more forgiving or extreme forgiveness as the XF stands for against the X, which is really low spin. They only do one version in the fairway wood, which is an X. So very much a low spinning product, but we've got movable weights on the bottom, as we see in the drivers. So we've got the four uh, tungsten, high density tungsten screws, and then we've got the four lighter weight uh, titanium screws. So obviously they can be moved around. So you've got a couple of options here. You can put all four of the heavy tungsten screws in the front section, which is what I've done here. So they're also making this in its more low spin uh, characteristics, which should sort of suit me a little bit more. Or you could move those and put those in the, in the two, in the heel and the toe. So basically pulling that weight further back, but also more into the corners of the club, which as we know, helps to increase the MOI of the golf club, ultimately less twist on those miss hits, ultimately making it a little bit more um, forgiving. So let's get one cracked off to start with and I've um, got myself obviously set up on the sim here with the with the GC quad and just putting this down by the golf ball first instinct it's a, a lovely lovely shape it's very rounded I like that little slight two-tone colour now so we've got that sort of grey of what we see the carbon crown behind that front section which I think looks really really nice um, and it's a lovely compact head let's give this first one a hit That's a nice strike. It's fraction toe, if I'm going to be really picky, but it's flown out quite nicely. Fraction that right hand side. Lovely. Yeah, so nice opening tee shot. And the sound, what I was very impressed with with the drive was the acoustics. The sound I thought was absolutely perfect. I think PXG, I don't know whether they've done a lot of, um, well, I guess in the old, do a lot of a lot of design around the sound and the acoustics that the club makes. Because a lot of times we relate that to as feel. But again, this is a lovely sounding um, club as we strike it. It's good. Fraction lower in the club face, but again, that's come out really quite powerful. Nice and neutral on its ball flight. That's getting out at 261. So that, I imagine that spindle just crept up a little bit on that. It was a little bit lower in that club face. So as I say, this is Gen 2. We've still got adjustability in the hosel, so we can move loft up and down by up to 1.5, both up and down. I've got this set as standard at 15 degree, so I tend not to move my loft too much really with a three wood. It's a little bit toey, and that's just moved up the left hand side there now. So, little bit of gear in there on that toe section, and I think that's where with the heavy weights in that front section might just create maybe a little bit more of that sort of gear effect on the actual golf ball on those missed strikes. I think what I'll do after I've hit one more of these is I'll shift that into the back section of the screws and we'll test it in that slightly more forgiving option. Again, just leaking up that right fraction. Get a little bit off that bottom. Okay, right, so like the look of it, like the uh, acoustics of that particular club very much. I'm just going to move those tungsten weights now into the corners of the club and just see if that feels any different to me. I've just moved my strike a little bit on that batch of shots there and you can see the dispersion just opened up a little bit of that right, a little bit of that left, but I feel quite a quite a bit of twisting in the club as I miss that strike and obviously I'm just missing this quite subtly but it makes a big difference of what it does through through the actual flight so let's shift those weights in those slightly different positions and see if that changes my feel but also maybe the consistency of that ball flight okay so move those tungsten weights two into that toe section two into the heel section obviously the titanium weights are now all in that fur furthest four slots of the sole so theory is pulling that weight back but also into heel and toe 
helps to sort of stabilize the head a little bit more on those off center hits. So it'd be interesting to see how this sort of feels, um, you know, as, as maybe if I move my strike a little bit. So let's get this first one hit in this particular weight setting. Okay, so that was a little bit toe, but that felt not quite as turny there. It has moved up that left side, but didn't feel quite as twisting. Now we've seen a similar technology that we've seen in the driver with this um, sort of carbon crown, which has sort of got um, sort of rods in it, which is strengthening and moving weight and that weight that they save moving it more forward in the club face to create a sort of faster ball speed is what PXG is saying. But I think, you know, acoustic wise, it's, it's really good. The shape and look of it is stunning. It sits very square when you put it down by the golf ball, which I like. Again, that's a bit necky. I'm <laughs> definitely using most of the club face on this particular club. But again, that didn't really feel as, as, as sort of gear enough. Sometimes when you hit that necky one, you always see it just really peel off to the right. That didn't really go as aggressive on that ball flight. So maybe that little bit of stabilizing on that head, you know, if you're just moving that strike a little bit. Yeah, it definitely feels a little bit more stable through the shot. That's good. That's good. Nice and neutral. Okay, so definitely feel more stabilised in the head with the weights in that um, heel and that toe section. It does feel like it's not as forward flying I'd be interested to look at some spin numbers it feels like it's a little or visually it looks a little bit higher spinning which again is typically what it would probably try and do with moving those weights in that back section um, but let's look at some numbers a little bit more detail between the sort of weights forward and the weights back in the x fairway wood okay so the uh, top one is when i had the weights in the furthest four position and you can see the blue bit weights back uh, in the bottom four shots. So looking at ball speed, pretty identical, 154.4, 154.8, so identical there. Um, launch, 8.9, you get 7.9, so not a lot in it. A little bit on that low side, but I did catch a few low in that club face, which I typically do uh, with my driver, but more so with a fairway wood. And that does affect the spin number a little bit, so you can see I get some really high sort of spin number ones when I do catch that uh, ball low in the face. So you see, interesting, the first one there, 12 degree, very different launch compared to the others. Obviously, struck that higher up the club face, I get much better or more optimum sort of spin number from that uh, particular strike. But, you know, yes, fairway wood isn't my most friendly club, but we've got to look at his averages. Let's see where I'm hitting it and how that affects the numbers um, and do a comparison between that with the weights in that different position. So we will look at the spin number there, three, four against three, nine, five, seven, with the weights in the back position. There's a five, good, about 500 revs more on an average there between those four shots hit with each of those settings, uh, more spin with the weights in the back, which is typically what you would expect. And I did sort of see that a little bit, a little bit more of that ball just sort of stalling a little bit um, in the air. Uh, so carry distance there, you can see 246 against 239 through the air. So a little bit more out of it with the low spin, which typically is, is through that 500 uh, rev lower on that spin number there, because the ball speed's um, sort of pretty much identical. Right, okay guys, so there we go. There's the PXG Gen 2 0341X fairway wood. So these are available in a 2, a 3, a 5 and a 7 wood. So interesting, the 2 wood there, which is a 13 degree, um, typically that sort of strong fairway wood or possibly that driver replacement off the tee. Um, only one head, so we don't get, as I mentioned before, we don't get the XF and the X, it's just one head, but we have got the option to move these weights forwards and backwards. So just try and alter that spin number as you can see happen to me there. Wasn't my best ball striking day, on this particular video but you know what we as golfers we get days like that so it's never a bad thing to test a product even when you're not really striking it that great because it shows exactly what it does on your miss hits so good ones will be good i'm sure um but what are those slight miss hits like in terms of performance and drop-offs and it's sometimes good to throw a few of those into the into the mix when you're testing really okay let me know your views on the new gen 2 range from pxg obviously different price point now price has come down which i think is is pleasing a lot of golfers out there maybe bring it into a range that possibly is affordable don't get me wrong it's still not cheap but um a little bit more maybe in the in the right sort of ballpark area um 
obviously a lot of adjustability, but yeah, let me know your comments down below in terms of the Gen 2 range from PXG. If you enjoyed the videos and you haven't subscribed, then I'd love you to hit that subscribe button, uh, hit that bell icon to get notifications of any future videos. Obviously follow my social media platforms, both Instagram and Twitter, and the handles there are at MNGolfCoach, and I look forward to catching up very soon.